What's it, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Morgs Brew. It has been a while. The country's gone absolutely crazy while we've been on, on holiday, or wherever you've been, wherever I've been. So I thought I'd better come back here, let you guys all know that you're not alone, and there are other ways of getting booze. You don't have to go to the bottle stores and raid these things. You can make it at home, alone, by yourself. All you need is a little bit of time, a little bit of skill, a little bit of knowledge. So today I want to try and uh, do my part to rebuild this country by not getting involved politically because there's too many of these guys running around, little puppets, you know how they are. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to empower you guys. I'm going to show you how you can do your own brew. This video is not sponsored. It is however dedicated to Ross. You've been wanting this video. This is for you, bro. Today, we're going to be making some banana wine. We're going to take these bunches here in my Goldfinger field, and we're going to take them down to the shed. We're going to chop them all up, take them back to the brew den, cook them, spice them, add our yeast, brew them. Then we're going to take that wine. We're going to filter that stuff out, and we're going to distill it. This is quite a big episode. This is a time-filled episode. So I hope you enjoy what I'm going to show you today and uh, find what I'm going to tell you interesting so that you can go home and do this for yourself. Let's check this out. So if you're unfamiliar with bananas, the way this works is bananas come on what's called a tree, but it's not actually a tree. It's like a modified bulb. Everything above ground is actually leaves. The bunches come in, in big bunches like this where they have multiple hands. At the end of the hands, they've got a little flower tip that's going to be taken off. And then we've got to chop the hands off the bunch. And then we've got to separate the hands and clean up the ends. And then we've got to pack those ends into boxes. And we're going to take those boxes and they normally go to ripening rooms where they get ethylene gas on them to make the fruit go yellow so it gets to the market, gets to you guys nice and blemish free so you don't throw it away. With these bananas, we're not going to do that. We're going to take these bananas straight from the field into our shed where they will sit for a two-week natural ripening period where they'll ripen up nicely and we're gonna take those bananas and I'll show you the rest inside but this is how it starts a banana hanging out in the wind naturally growing photosynthesizing Sun's energy turning it into sugars that we are gonna turn into alcohol so this isn't the exact bunch I'm gonna use this will be the bunch I use for the next brew but the bunches I've used are already being brewed so I'm just gonna a little bit of backwards here and there and uh, let's get on with the show huh because nobody wants to hang around for a few months, like this guy did. <laughs> we all want some of our moonshine, so let's go. So you're not allowed to sell this stuff, so basically it's just for me, and you can watch and uh, brew your own. Go home and brew your own, bro, you can't have mine. I'm not gonna tell you where it is. You're gonna come here and loot my shit. Now, bro, the top secret location. Basically, this is a 12 to 14 day fermentation where we're gonna take banana, sugar, yeast, we're gonna to mix that all up, turn it into a high, alcohol yielding wine, which we then put through a boiler still combination to put out moonshine. That's the banana wine that we're gonna be making, guys. It's as simple as recipe. Let's go. So one of the things in, uh, you'll notice in this episode is that I'm not gonna be too careful with cleanliness. The quick answer for that is that we're gonna distill this. <laughs> We're not going to be using a normal brewing yeast. I have a friend of mine, Nectar Collector, here on the south coast. Kindly donated a fermented jar of honey where we've got some wild, wild yeasts inside there. That's my stamp of approval. Just went on this. This is gold. Why are you talking about distilling it? You don't have to worry about all these other wild yeasts. And now you're going to be using these goddamn wild yeasts. What's, what's wrong with you, bro? You told us last season, last lockdown, Stay away from these wild yeasts and clean everything. And we've gone completely mad here in this uh, interim period that we've we've had. We've obviously gone completely mad. <laughs> Probably sitting there thinking, what about methanol, bro? What's all this nonsense about going blind, bro? You told me last time I was gonna go blind. You might still go blind if you make this one. You see, that's the thing. I don't want to drink the wine. I want the moonshine. So I'm not scared of no methanol because I understand the physics. Yeah. I claim to understand the physics. Nobody really understands the physics. What you have to do is you have to separate that, that interface. The methanol comes out first, comes out the still, comes out those vapors at the end first, and we're just going to catch that shit and we're going to throw it away. And then we don't have to worry about this blindness nonsense. We're going to drink us some straight up clean moonshine. Some of the tools we're going to need to use are the basics. We're going to need a thermometer to know our temperature to let me know when to put the yeast in. And I've got a hydrometer, which is a calibrated device that floats in liquid. The more sugar there is in it, the, the denser the liquid is, the higher this is going to float. The less sugar in the liquid, the less dense the liquid is. So the lower this thing is going to float. 
So we've got this pot all ready. We're gonna put this into our blue barrel down there now. And we're gonna see what kind of concentration our sugar's at and uh, get this guy ready to ferment. Okay, so what I'm reading here now is at a 1.060. Specific gravity is on uh, right now. So that's how much sugar is in there. And then what happens is at the end of this fermentation, we take another reading. At the end of the fermentation, it's going to have used a whole lot of that sugar, so it's going to be floating a lot lower down. And then that difference between there and there is going to show you how much sugar has gone out of your vessel. And what you can assume is that, like I said to you, that yeast is going to use that stuff in an uh, anaerobic fermentation to make ethanol. So you can assume that not quite one to one, but roughly the sugar that's lost is ethanol. Let's just do it like that. Our yeast is already proof to ferment the shit out of that honey. So what I want to do is just get it all nice and like looped up and loose to get in there with all that banana juice. Yeah, we're up here at 34 degrees C. It's going to be safe to put in this yeast. I don't know if you can see this anyways. Trust me, 34 C. Some nice organic fermented honey, courtesy of Mr. Nectar Collector. Little disclaimer, although I'm sure this is going to work. If it doesn't, Simon, it's your fault. From what I've seen, these wild yeasts and honey can push around 11%. They're not quite a champagne yeast, but I reckon the flavor that's gonna come out of this thing is gonna be. So the last thing you wanna do before you lock this guy up for a couple of weeks is to get a lot of air into here. The yeast is gonna to wanna to start off his process aerobically and it's gonna use up all of that sugar and uh, in doing so, gonna be using oxygen at the same time. So it's gonna be respiring, it's gonna carbon dioxide build up, that carbon dioxide is gonna come up to the top and it's gonna start gassing out outside of our fancy pipes we made in one of our videos in the last season. I'm gonna write the date on here so we know. 18 of July, 2021. 7th, 7th of uh, August, 18th of May, we closed this guy up. So there's been 20 days since we sealed this tank up. Let's have a look inside. There's no easy way to do this that I've got right now. The idea here is with minimal disturbance on that surface, try and scoop out all that uh, top gunk and get rid of that. We'll just get rid of that piece. Nice bucket full of pie. And then we're gonna siphon off here all of our liquid through another, another filter bag. And the filtrate out of these processes is gonna be what we put in our boiler. So we're here now. We're here now, at last, with our still. This is our boiler. Our wine is sitting in here. We have an element at the bottom. And what happens is, as the alcohols in this liquid, this mixed liquid, start to heat up, they start to vaporize and volatilize first. Yeah, there's a bit of water that comes with it, but let's say the alcohol leads the way. And of that alcohol, methanol is the guy that's going first. And those vapors are going to come up this column. Throw those vapors up around here. And once they go over this corner, they get into our cooling jacket. Those gases, as they condense, they will move down this pipe and they will drip out here. You cannot fuck this up. You need to take this bit out. If you are making alcohol this way, you must remove the methanol. This is not something that's funny, gonna give you a bad hangover. This shit might just kill you if you drink it. So don't ever even leave that bottle lying around in some kind of a cupboard where you might find it one day and get a whiff of it and think, woo, shit, that smells good, man. Have a swig of it and that's it. That's it for you. Check it. Nearly 420. We're nearly at the end of our stripping run. It's uh, the end of day one for this part of the process. This is a two stage double distillation, is what we're going to call it. Where the first time is we get rid of as much water as quickly as possible. We pull out what we're going to call the low wines, which is not quite purified alcohol. And tomorrow we take that not quite purified alcohol, we check its ABV, we make sure it's below 40 and then we're gonna put it back into the boiler, run a second run, second distillation. They, they say the early bird catches the worm, but I think in our case, <laughs> the early bird gets pissed sooner. I don't know about you guys, but when I make something, I can't resist but tasting every little bit along the way. I have to have like samples, I, it gets in my hands, I lick my fingers, you know? It's just one of those things. So inevitably by the end of this, filtration process, by the time we've got some solid moonshine coming out there from our wine, I'll be pissed. Pretty much guaranteed. 
alcohol doesn't just come out there at uh, whatever percentage and then you drink that as moonshine although that's what a lot of people will do um realistically you want to cut this back you want to dilute it a little bit with water make it a more drinkable flavor usually anything about 40 percent alcohol is just going to give you quite a bit of a burn you can have this at a higher percentage um, it's, it's different strokes with different oaks you know but you know you generally would use water to dilute the alcohol just to make it drinkable okay that's it that's it that's it that's it it's all out all our wine has been stripped we managed to run the still we've pulled out all the spirits we're gonna get a lot lower yield than i expected and then i got last time nonetheless i've got another fermenter already loaded with yeast yeast so i'll catch up with it but i'm very interested in the flavors i'm getting out of this so i'm just gonna taste the different cut so let me play around with these and uh, figure out what i'm gonna do but if any of you guys are brewing and you've got any comments on how to cut these things, please stick them down in the comment section below. I'm just going to think about it for a while <laughs> and have a few more sips. So I better end this off before I get uh, ticky donkey and I won't be able to finish my spiel. So if you're still here, if you watched all the way to the end, you better, have, you better hit that like button. It's on this side, I think. Hit the subscribe, thumbs up, give us a comment in the comments below. Let me know if you've ever done this, if you want to do it. If you've got any questions about it, hit me up and see if I can answer it. And other than that, thank you very much for watching. It's breakfast time for these guys. My rat, the ratty tat, the original meister. Hey, Milo, say hello to everybody. Say hello to everybody, Milo. Hey, say hello to everybody, Milo rat. What's that, Mark? <laughs> hey, my boy. He's a good boy. Guys, we'll see you in the next time. Peace out.